The views and opinions expressed on any program are those of the producers and or the persons appearing on the program and do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of FRC Media, Bristol Community College or the City of Fall River. the time. All the time. God is good. Amen, amen. Uh, welcome to First Baptist Church on this beautiful uh, April Sunday morning. Uh, I'm told we're going to have a beautiful day. Uh, it's good that it's sunny. Uh, I tease that right away. We, if you've uh, read into your program, you'll see that we are going to be uh, celebrating the completion of our solar panel project. What that's going to require is uh, that it, uh, right at the very end of the service, just before the benediction, uh, we're all going to uh, arise and go out the front door, take a right, and start heading. Uh, we're going to cross Pine Street because we want to be able to see the panels. If we were right on Pine Street, but all we would see is the brick building. So we'll just be on the other side, and we'll get to a point where we can see the panels and hand it out uh, something uh, for people, uh, a few people to read and. I is here, so I probably could have led with that, which is that I'm uh, sorry to report that Jamie was uh, not uh, feeling well, uh, and so uh, got in contact with me, was able to, uh, on the last minute, and thank you so, so much for, you were here last week, so, <laughs> yeah, well, such a good time, and did so well, careful if you do a good job, because we'll ask you to do it again, anyway, um, thank you so much for being able to, uh, to do that uh, on such a uh, short notice, uh, we're blessed. So uh, that's our service. We'll actually end out on Pine Street, then uh, benediction, and then we can head back for our uh, coffee hour. So, and we're excited about that. Um, it's it's a it's a big step for us. It took a while, much much longer than we thought, uh, but it is uh, going to bless uh, the uh, financial bottom line of this church, and uh, and also of course uh, harness power from the sun. So. Uh, perhaps I'll talk about the eclipse and my joys and concerns, because um, I got to enjoy that. Uh, let's see, announcements. Uh, the, the Leadership Council, you've got a long day because we've got the solar panel blessing. You, you have to eat some snacks, and then we need to see you in the uh, office after service for our uh, monthly Leadership Council meeting. Um, uh, we are starting to announce the South Coast Community Corral, which uh, for the first time will actually be uh, performing here, uh, and uh, that's, that's exciting for us. To, uh, if any of you have been, you know it's a big, uh, a big group, and we're gonna fit them in somehow. And, uh, but we're looking forward to that, and that is uh, the weekend of May 18th and 19th, with it being at our church on Saturday at 7.30. Uh, so uh, mark that on your calendars. Um, let's see, the Clothing and Grace Ministry, we're gonna fix this for the next announcement. We just want to start listing what we do need. Uh, I was surprised at how many coats were asked for uh, just this past Thursday. We actually had a, uh, a new family show up, and uh, so we were scrambling a bit, and but we found uh, the things that we needed, but uh, it just is not getting warmer, so a winter coat with, and warm coats with hoods are still, are still needed. Um, and so I believe that's everything. Are there any other announcements? Rita. Yes, also. Okay. Okay. What Rita just said, so that we all can hear, is that uh, uh, men's shoes and sneakers. Go ahead, get into that. Uh, we need them. Get into your closet. See that you have too many, uh, and, and pass them on. Whatever. Uh, most likely, they'll be in, in, in a good enough condition to pass on. Uh, people are out there in the, these this spring rain, and they're soaking wet feet. And we can give them dry socks. But uh, our selection of shoes is limited, and so anything you can donate, I'll include that in myself. I'll go looking through. Uh, I hope you are hungry, not just for the uh, beautiful uh, spread that uh, Luce and everyone has put out, but we were blessed by uh, Barcelo's Bakery. Uh, Sarah there called me. We have a good relationship, and she had three huge bags of Portuguese pops. Uh, ready, uh, that were, she knew she was not going to be able to sell that many, so she wanted to uh, pass them on. So in the uh, coffee hour room are lots and lots of Portuguese pups. Take as many, please, 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 that are going to go 
you know, we could hand them out Tuesday, but by then that's, what, four days. So, yeah. Uh, take what you can. I'll try to bless the other two churches that worship here on Sunday. But uh, thank you, uh, Luke, for uh, reminding me of that. Uh, please, please, it, you will be blessing us by taking. Don't feel uh, that you're being greedy. And if you know anyone, take a second bag and pass it on and uh, uh, afford that blessing this day. So with all those announcements made, let us uh, enter into worship responsive reading. Good heavens. Thank you so much. It's a good day to be alive. Amen. I mean, I'm honestly just happy that there's sunshine outside. We, the, the second half of the week wasn't so great, but God showed up and there is sunshine. Let us stand for our responsive call to worship. God, who is rich in mercy, even when we were dead through our sins, made us alive together with Christ. For grace we are what God has made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works. For Christ is our peace. He has made us one and has broken down the blood so he came and proclaimed peace to you who were far off. And peace, and peace to, to those, those who were near. So we are no longer strangers and aliens, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household God. Let us sing our first hymn, for which I'm going to back away from the mic because I don't know how this goes, but we're going to have fun doing it together. As water to the thirsty.
you continue to be with us and that our peace and is still in our hearts forever and ever. We pray this in your son Jesus Christ's name. Amen. 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 All right. Let us again rise for our hymn of preparation. I love you, Lord. Just sing in that your times. sometimes meet up. Uh, I always recognize that uh, she is, uh, you know, not a social butterfly. She's uh, more of an observer. So I can recognize that Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday, she may be off, uh, you know, in her own mind and watching what's going on. She, they certainly take good, good care of her and there are lots of activities and she participates in those. But uh, it's a time where you have a lot of time to think. So took a little while for her to uh, come round and, 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 and surface, to, uh, but we certainly had a nice meal together. Uh, absolutely, the, uh, the neurons all fired. Once that, once that uh, dish of uh, vanilla ice cream with sprinkles and chocolate syrup, I can tell you, everything, everything was working, including that right hand that's been giving her trouble. So uh, that, that's the blessing of Naomi. Uh, I didn't get to last week, I certainly want to share because it certainly uh, affected me in a, in a powerful way, was that I uh, took the time to, on um, Monday, April 8th, to drive up to Plattsburgh, New York, which was uh, in the path of totality. And so, uh, you know, I know we don't have one for 20 years, but for anybody, I, uh, if you can ever experience uh, that, full, uh, that full path of totality, it is, it was, Incredible, and I and I really do. I am at loss for words. And I can tell you, as many people have also said, uh, if you've heard anyone that it, it becomes emotional. Uh, it, it, you get to see the sun in a, in a way you've never seen it before, and uh, I got to share that with you know a group of strangers. I didn't know anyone there, uh, but certainly met people, and it was that that community type feeling that you know the people that were sitting around me had got we'd gotten to know each other as we waited and waited and waited for that last moment. So um, it was something I certainly wanted to share, and uh, I'm glad I uh, went off and uh, took that time. And the 11 hour drive home, no problem. Yes, Roberta. My friend who was at the free book for unfortunately his mother passed away this week. Okay. She had dementia and she had a severe stroke. And, um, that was the end. Yeah. Okay. So she's lifting up her friend Eve but, uh, on the passing of uh, the mother. Uh, uh, that dementia was, uh, she was already in the, in the path of dementia, uh, but a stroke came along and, 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 and took, uh, took her. And so uh, we pray for Eve and all that uh, are surrounding uh, Arlene. Uh, I'd like to ask Chris for Rob. He's going into the hospital this week to have the second round of that radioactive iodine treatment and hopefully this time it will work. Okay. 
um, and the radioactive iodine treatment. So, our uh, prayers are concerned. So. First, the same as a joy to see Richard Barron, and he was far out of seeing me in the, in the market. In the market. Um, yes, and um, he asked for prayers for his family. Okay. As he had tears, he lost um, an aunt and an uncle, and um, he misses church, so um, his worker said that she was going to leave a note for his worker named Anthony, okay. uh, that maybe he can bring him in uh, once in a while. So it was great to see him. So for those that don't know, uh, but many of you do, Richard Barron worshipped us with us for uh, many, many, many years, um, uh, challenged, and therefore has a worker that uh, needs to uh, bring him along. So prayers, prayers that that would all line up again, and that Richard could be in the pew, and uh, we know the excitement that he would have, and you would absolutely have to collect and do the offering. That was the first thing you asked. <laughs> you need me? <laughs> oh, yes. Yes, we, we need, we need you. you for the offering. We do. We do. We absolutely do. So thank you for the smiles. That I, I did want to share, I, I, as I come around, I always think of our prayer supper. And we'll get to you soon in one second. Uh, I feel like I'm repeating myself, so I'll be quick. But we had a, uh, uh, a guest for our lift up uh, how he feels safe in our Eric Hall. And that is something that we uh, strive for every single time. Yes, there's always food, and we absolutely, that, that's what gathers us. But we recognize that uh, for many people, they spend hours and days and weeks feeling unsafe and not housed and wondering what could come around their corner. So when they come into our building and they sit down and God's spirit is surrounding them because of the years and years and years of that uh, outreach, uh, they feel safe and that is uh, God's work. That's God's work, not ours. So, we are ready to listen. Musu, what would you like to lift up? I just want to bless God for everything as he will be getting ready to join his family. I will, I will feel good because he will not be here. But I will praise him, praise God so much for him because he will be with other people, you know, that will experience his way of doing things, the spirit that he will carry around them, it will be best. And I bless God for his kiss, and I'll be with you there. Amen. But I'll never leave with him for long. Gotcha. So this is Moose's brother and his name? Richard. Richard. Richard's brother is traveling, uh, moving down to North Carolina, correct? North Carolina. Yeah, yeah. North Carolina. So, um, Musu wishing. So, it's okay. Okay. I'm not sure. And I guess we'll just pop in. Uh, so, anyway. Uh, so, but uh, moving out of out of, uh, out of Burrow and out of this area, uh, wishing him well and wishing that the people that, that uh, meet him are, are blessed by the spirit that, that he carries. So, uh, Sandra, what would you like to share? Amen. Bless all the uh, runners and all the spectators for the Boston uh, Marathon. Uh, it was a perfect day for spectators. Is uh, having uh, being a run, runner in in, uh, in the past and a walker now. Um, uh, beautiful and sunny and seventy is not what you want to do twenty six miles in. So the spectators were blessed. The runners uh, had a, had a struggle, and uh, but God bless them. That, 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 um, that's a that's a special tradition. So as we come to the front, we lift up those that uh, we wish uh, could join us, but we want them to uh, be uh, recognized, and, and uh, that is certainly Sue Holland, and we uh, love her dearly. Um, uh, let's see. We had Bob and Ann here uh, last week, and I know Jamie was uh, uh, regretful that she uh, was, uh, had taken vacation and missed them, but we certainly wish them uh, to come back again when things are, uh, weather is good and they feel, both feel strong to do that, it's always a blessing. Uh, we lift up Esther, we lift up Sally, we lift up Jane, um, and so all of those, and the ones I forget, I apologize, but we will, uh, uh, we should, we should, uh, there we go, there we go. All right, thank you so much, everyone. I'm going to sleep.
I'm sorry. I'm going to sneak it in. We'll, we'll do it at the solar panels as well. But the last thing I realized is that when we do the solar panels ceremony, the amount of work that Tanya and Margaret did to keep that project, the actual construction project going, was immense. It went on and on and on. Phil uh, launched that thing and, and got, uh, got the right people involved. But the people that are here that have to do that work day in and day out to keep this building well and handle that kind of uh, project, bless them. Let us look to the Lord in prayer. Holy oh God, we thank you for this day and we come to you with our joys and concerns because we know you want to hear about them. Uh, you want to be in relationship with us, God. And so we thank you for we thank you for caring about what's going on in our lives, not just being a God who's far away, but a God is who is near. We thank you for Naomi being well and for ice cream being a blessing that fixes a multitude of things. And we thank you, God, for this incredible world that you have placed us in where things like eclipses happen and just can blow our minds with how wonderful you are and how, how what a detailed way you've ordered the stars and the, the heavens and the skies, dear God. And we just thank you for the opportunity to be able to uh, be a part of that and to see your, your wonders in the world, dear God. We pray for um, a friend, Eve, whose mother has passed, dear God, and we just pray that for all those who are mourning the loss of a loved one, especially Eve, you would be with them. You would comfort them and give them your strength and even your peace, dear God, in the midst of their, in their mourning, dear Lord. We pray for Rob, who's going into the hospital for a treatment this week, that it will be smooth and effective and successful, dear God. We know that you are the master healer. We thank you for giving people the gift who are going to be working on him of healing, dear God. We, we pray for uh, Richard Barron, and uh, we ask that you would just work out a way for him to come back to, to church, dear God, and apparently get to uh, take charge of the offering, dear Lord. There is something for everybody, and Lord, you know that we all have different, uh, we are all different members of the body, so we pray that you would allow him to be a, a more present member of the body, dear God. We thank you for branch supper and the wonderful presence of it here where people can feel safe, dear God. There's no end to the things that can threaten us, dear Lord, but, but you are able uh, to, to through the joy and, and compassion of the people who make branch supper possible, we thank you that you make people who are often unsafe feel safe, dear God. We pray for a Richard brother who's moving soon and switching things up on a different part of the country, dear Lord, and we just pray that you would see to all of his needs that you would give him mercy and favor and allow him to be a blessing to everyone that he meets, Lord. We pray for the Boston Marathon, both the participants and the spectators. A little more for the participants because they're really working out there. Um, but we thank you that we get together and we remember when the, it wasn't so safe to do that, Lord. So we just thank you for a safe and happy gathering. We pray for those uh, and wish them well who we wish were here with us today, dear God. We lift up our prayers for Sue, for Bob and Ann, for Esther, for Sally, for Jane, for Edward and Claudia, dear God. And, and we pray that you would bring your peace to this church, dear God, to every individual heart, every family, every every group, every every activity, dear God, let your peace rest, rule, and abide here. It is in Jesus' name and for his sake we pray. Amen.
Amen. Let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Well, apparently, until Richard gets back, we have to make do with some other folks taking care of tithes and offering. But it is that time right now. So I
the bulletin was about peace, and that got me thinking. So I worked on a little something, and we'll see how it goes. But today we're going to talk about this, this wonderful scripture. A lot of people have decided not to watch the news. A lot of people have decided not to let the problems of the world bother them. They're trying to keep their peace. And the more ugly parts of life can make that hard to do. What does keeping that peace even really mean? I know when you get married, speak now or forever hold your peace, but what is this peace? Some people want to remove anything that would disturb them in order to have peace. I keep what they're after, but try to sterilize the world around you of anything that could be a downer. There's no way to live. And it's impossible because there are times when life will rain on your parade no matter what you do. There are times when we all lack peace. The absence of peace is war. We're at war with ourselves, our families sometimes, our supervisor, so-called friends, and of course our enemies. What else would we do? Pray for them? Hint, that's the answer. Sometimes the very simple act of being alive robs us of peace. After all, it can be a really cold world out there. There are moments in our lives that threaten to break our hearts in two. How can there be peace? Nation is fighting against nation. How can there be peace? Like the Apostle Paul, the good I would do, I don't do. And the evil I would not do, that I do. How can there be peace? I don't know how, but watch out, because here comes Jesus with a very special gift for you, for each and every one of us. I declare to you today that peace is possible. We're going to explore three questions about the nature of divine peace that will have you rejoicing and truly embracing it in your life. Our first question, what is Peace. So peace is not the thing that happens when you just ignore the problems in yourself, your life, and the world. That's called oblivion. Merriam-Webster defines peace as a state of tranquility or quiet, freedom from civil disturbance, freedom from disquieting or oppressive thoughts or emotions, harmony in personal relations, so there used to be these toys that were called Weeble Wobbles. <laughs> I don't know if they still exist, but you could knock those things around, throw them across the room, smack them, no matter what you did to them. They always stayed upright. <coughs> they always popped back up. I think of that as peace. The thing that allows you to stay centered and upright no matter what life throws at you. And that is not to say that we are not affected by the vicissitudes of life. We will wobbles our inanimate objects. If you prick us, we bleed. Our humanity means that we have feelings, among other things. We can be hurt, frustrated, alienated, angry, chaotic when people or things throw us off balance. Peace doesn't mean that we don't hurt, but that despite whatever human response we have to the pain, there is a deeper assurance that things will somehow, some way, be all right. How will they be all right? That's up to us as the body of Christ to make that a reality. By the same token, peace doesn't mean injustices don't happen. But it means that there will be a greater justice that reigns supreme, where the last shall be first, and the first shall be last. 
as the followers of the Prince of Peace, we strive every day to build God's kingdom on earth as it is in heaven, to make just that happen. Peace is the unbreakable faith in a God who is with you and holds you and will ultimately make things right in a way that the world's worst disasters just can't compare to. People throw the term peace of mind around a lot. What I'm talking about is more like peace of soul. God gives us peace because God gives us herself. So picture a cute little kid crying. Maybe they dropped their ice cream or skinned their knee. When mama picks them up, that child is either going to stop crying or cry hard. <laughs> and I've never understood that, but those are the two options. Mm. They might stop crying because it doesn't hurt that bad. And being held by mama was all they really needed to make things better. They might cry harder <clears throat> because it is a big deal. And now that they know they're finally safe in mama's arms, they can let out all the tears they've been holding in. Those big lungs indicate that the danger is over and that the journey of healing is beginning. Which one of those are you when peace flies out the window? I may spend my whole life truly trying to understand what peace really is, but on this Sunday, I say it's being held in a loving mother's arms. That's just a part of what Jesus is talking about in this passage. And he's giving it away. My peace I give to you. Jesus is giving us the peace that he has from knowing if he cries, his daddy will come pick him up. That's what we get. Jesus is giving us the confidence that his father does all things well. That's what we get. Jesus is giving us the knowledge that weeping does endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Mm -hmm. That's what we get. The next question is, where is peace? Because there are levels to this. And peace crops up on absolutely every conceivable one of them. What do you mean you give me peace, Jesus? Real peace seems pretty impossible right now. There is just so much chaos, so much discord. So, yes, Jesus, I'm listening to what you have to say. Jesus says he gives us his peace. That's extra special peace. And he says he gives not as the world gives. That means no strings attached, no bait and switch. There's your personal peace. Is your spirit in harmony with itself and with God? I think of myself as a normalish person, and I guess I'm mostly at peace with myself and trying so hard to be at peace with God. But there are some times, and there are some parts of myself that I fight with. And God and I have our fights. Here's a hint. It, it's always my fault. <laughs> Here I am, struggling to be at peace with myself. And Jesus is giving it away. Jesus offers the forgiveness that greases the wheels of peace on the personal level with both myself because I can finally forgive myself for my flaws instead of always beating myself up over them. <laughs> and it works with God, who forgives me of my madness and still promises to be there. Then there's interpersonal peace. Oh, other people are the worst, aren't they? <laughs> Except for me, you know. <laughs> Are you in harmony with those around you? If I can't even get along with myself, what are the odds? And it doesn't count if you just cut everyone out of your life who even looks like they might disagree with you. Take my word for it. 
Yes, I was one of those who was quick to drop you if there was any mess. Mm. I just can't be bothered. Mm. Jesus said to turn the other cheek. But you can't do that if you're not there, and I would be gone. <laughs> Mercy. I wanted to have peace, but I didn't know how to make peace. I'm trying to figure out this whole love your neighbor as yourself thing, and Jesus is giving it away. And the answer is the same. Just as you forgive yourself of your flaws, forgive others of theirs. Whew, then there are communities and groups right on up to countries that can go to war with each other. We live in a world where multiple countries are at war right now. You still go grocery shopping all the same. I know I'm just a crazy pacifist, but it truly boggles my mind that no one is even talking about ending these wars and having peace. We're just going to send weapons forever and not even use, much less exhaust, diplomatic avenues and negotiations. Where are the voices for peace? We are a world at war, and I haven't the slightest idea what to do. I don't think there is anything I can do. And here comes Jesus, just giving it away. How can Jesus bring world peace? Well, it's a ripple effect. If you are at peace with yourself and your neighbor, this breeds communities and nations at peace. As within, so without. In the here and now, though, Jesus, what is your solution to Russia, Ukraine, or Israel, Palestine? We must cry out to the Lord for peaceful resolutions of all armed conflicts. When the people, not just individuals, but when the people cry out, God delivers them. We're too busy trying to be unaffected. We're focusing on avoiding all the downers because we're chasing a superficial peace. We don't want peace. We want to be unbothered. Do we have enough guts to feel the pain of war until we cry out in desperation to the Lord? If enough of us do that, things will change. Have I sold you on the peace of God yet? I may have pre-selected my audience. But if I have sold you on it, you may be asking, but how do I get it? After all, it's not as easy as reading the scripture and just wanting it. Although I would argue that is exactly the humble beginning from which it starts. We gotta want it the question of how to receive the gift of Christ's peace remains. It's right here in the scripture, which we'll get to in a second because I feel like there's a prerequisite. First, we have to believe that true peace is even possible in the first place. Have you got enough guts to say amidst all the craziness in us, our lives, and the world, that God has an antidote to fighting and discord? These days, God needs people to be bold and believe that God's peace is both possible and the answer for what's wrong with the world today. But back to the scripture. The answer of how to receive this gift is laid out in the second half of the verse. It says, do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. Now, that is only possible if you believe God is working. It comes back to the one thing you can't fake, faith. I knew there was a catch. If faith the size of a mustard seed can move mountains, I say I have faith the size of a grain of salt. And not sea salt either, good old mortals. Tiny. Everything requires faith. God wants me to soar 
but I'm clinging to the edge of the cliff, convinced God is trying to kill me by pushing me over the side, not realizing the whole time I have wings. And so do you. So I'm not gonna lie, the faith thing is hard, but at least we're here working on it together. I decree and declare that wars will cease, hatreds will resolve, and minds will stop fighting against themselves when we can truly know and believe that God is in control and does all things well. Our very realities will change when we finally let go of that cliff. And it's something different from it for each one of us. What's your cliff? When we finally let go of that cliff and let our wings of faith unfurl. Oh, what a day that will be. Let's do it for a little while together. Just for now. Believe with me that no matter what happens, God's got you and does all things well. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. We just grew our faith a little bit more and introduced a little bit more of God's peace into the world. Amen, friends? Amen. Amen. We now have our closing hymn, Go Now in Peace. Thank you for the sun, for its light and the energy it brings us. Amen. Amen. Let's get number two. Thank you for the solar panels and for the power they will provide. Amen. Help us to be good stewards of the resources you give us. 
Help us to touch the earth lightly and care for her well. And help us to continue to grow in our understanding to hand down to the next generation a sustainable way of living. Lord, bless these solar panels that they might do their work well. Bless this church that we may do your work well. Bless us that we might discern your will and carry out your ministries here in Fall River and that we might be a beacon of your light. Amen. 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 And in our, as our benediction, I'll just say, the Lord will give strength unto his people. The Lord will bless his people with peace. Amen. 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 Amen.